Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Hey guys, Amber here with a Meeple Family, and thank you so much for joining me today as I walk you through how to play Hocus Pocus the game. One of my favorite things to do on the channel is to really just go through tutorials on how these games work. These are games that we love to play around the table, so of course I love to share them with you here on this platform and hopefully give you some great ideas of games that you can introduce to your family. Now during the month of October, I do have some fun spooky themed games, and this is definitely one that our family enjoys. If you're not familiar, um, Hocus Pocus is also a movie. So these games are really fun. You can watch the movie and play the game or vice versa. And it just really makes for a great themed family night during the spooky month of October. So without further ado, let me show you how this game plays and you can see if it's a good fit for your gaming table. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and be sure to give this video a thumbs up. That really helps our channel grow. Well, to get started, you're going to place your cauldron board in the center of the play area. You're also going to need the witch's board and you're going to want to set that to one side but just make sure all players can access it easily. You're also going to need the Binks mover and these four trick tokens which can just be set out above the witch's board. Go ahead and place the sun token on the lowest start place on the witch's board and place the stun token nearby. You're going to find two sets of cards in the game. You are going to have ingredients cards and spell cards. Go ahead and shuffle the spell deck and place it next to the witch's board. Next up, take your ingredients card and give them a good shuffle. Depending on player count will dictate how many ingredients each player receives. We'll go ahead and set up a three player game, which means each player will receive four ingredients. Go ahead and place the remainder of the deck next to the witch's board. Each player may look at their own hand of ingredients cards, but they need to be kept secret from other players. Decide who's going to go first, and we're ready to start the game. Hocus Pocus is a cooperative game. All players will work together to try to stun the Sanderson sisters three times in order to win. What makes this cooperative game challenging is that you are restrictive in how open you can be about what cards you have or your goals for the cauldron. So let's go over how a Turn works. On your turn, you're going to do the following things in order. The first thing you'll do is ask one question. This is the only way for us to communicate with our fellow players to try to figure out a goal and help us stun one of the Sanderson sisters. These questions have to be asked so that the players can either answer yes or no. No specifics can be given. For instance, you can ask, do you have oil of boil? which is a card that looks like this. Then the other players will either answer yes or no. After you've asked your question and received your yes or no answer, it's time to play one ingredient from your hand. There are five different spaces on the cauldron you can play your ingredient. In order to play an ingredient, it must match the color or type of the top ingredient in that specific pile. For instance, I could play this green oil of boil here in the green space, or here in the oil of boil icon space. When playing ingredients, you want to keep in mind the different objectives in order to stun the Sanderson sisters. We need different configurations in order to stun each sister, so let's talk about those quickly. In order to stun Sarah, we need to have the same color in our cauldron. That might look something like this. In order to stun Mary, we need the same ingredient face up in our cauldron. And in order to stun Winifred, we need the same same ingredient, but we need one of each color. Some ingredient cards also have special icons like this. When played, this Binks icon will help you communicate with one another. So if I were to play this ingredient with the Binks icon, I will get the Binks meeple. I can then place this in front of another player or myself. Whatever player receives the Binks in front of them will play with their hand face up on the table so that all players know what ingredient cards they have. Binks will stay in front of the player unless another player plays a Binks card relocating Binks or the round ends. The other icon that may appear is this spellbook icon. When you play an ingredient showing the spellbook, the witches cast a spell. You'll need to draw 
draw one of these spell cards and resolve what the card says. Now, if it's your turn and you cannot play an ingredient, that will also cause the Sanderson sisters to cast a spell. You must discard at least one ingredient from your hand and draw an ingredient from the deck to replace each card you discard. Now, if you are able to play a card on your turn, at the end of your turn, you'll simply refill to replace the card you played. If the top card of all five piles in the cauldron match, either by color or type, then one of the witches is going to be stunned. Each time this happens and one of the witches is stunned, you're first going to move the sun up up one space. You're going to put the stun token on the specific witch that you stunned. For this example here, since they're all the same color, that's going to stun Sarah. Now keep in mind, it doesn't matter which of the sisters is stunned. You may stun the same witch multiple times. You don't have to stun each witch. And once a witch is stunned, the round ends immediately. So if the ingredient you played had a special icon on it, that is going to be mute and you are going to disregard that. So let's talk about what happens at the end of a round. If you were the player to play the final ingredient needed to stun that witch, go ahead and draw your card as normal to replenish your hand. If there happen to be any ongoing spell effects, they will end immediately at the conclusion of the round. We're also going to gather all ingredients ingredients in the cauldron and the discard pile. Taking the cards from the cauldron and the discard pile, we're going to sort the cards into two piles. One pile will include all of the special ingredients that have icons, while the other pile will just be basic ingredients. Once you've sorted out the two piles, go ahead and take all of the ingredients that don't have an icon. These are gonna be removed from the game and placed back in the box. Now, all of our special ingredients that have the icon are gonna be shuffled into the remaining deck that we have. We're also going to need to remove Binks from play. He's gonna be reset and no more hands will be exposed. And at this point, it's time for the new round to begin. The game is gonna end in one of two ways. If the sun token makes it all the way to the top on the witch's board, all players win. But if you must draw an ingredients card and there's no more ingredients deck, that means all players lose. Of course, you will have the chance to play the remaining cards in your hand, but if you're unable to defeat the Sanderson sisters with the cards remaining in hand, then they win and all other players lose. Now there is one more element of gameplay that may help you defeat the Sanderson sisters, and those are the four trick tokens. Each trick token can only be used once per game. Any player may use a trick token on their turn, but once the trick token is used, you're going to need to flip it over to indicate that it can't be used again. And that's a quick look at how Hocus Pocus the game plays. As I stated earlier, this is a game that our family really enjoys playing, and even though the recommended age is eight and up, my six-year-old does a great job because there's not a lot of reading in this game, and for the most part, all you're needing to do is match the icons and colors on the cauldron. The other thing I really enjoy about games like this is when they're tied to a movie, we typically love to watch the movie and then play the game or vice versa. It makes for a really fun themed family night and we really enjoy that. And of course, this game plays relatively quickly. I believe it plays in about 30 minutes, sometimes a little longer if I'm helping my six-year-old along, but for the most part, we can get a full game in 30 minutes and my kids absolutely love cooperative games and this is definitely one where they just love being on the same team trying to achieve the same goal together. So if you haven't had the chance to try out Hocus Pocus the game, this October may be a great time to give it a try. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope this video helped you decide if Hocus Pocus the game is a good fit for your gaming table and your family. Thanks so much, and I'll see you later. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes